Okay, and so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to work with sprites on the Commodore 128 using the built-in sprite commands in BASIC. So let's get right into it. First, I like to talk about what is a Sprite. Sprite is a colorless lemon lime flavored soft drink created by the Coca Cola Company. It was first developed in West Germany in 1959. It was introduced to the United States under the name Sprite in 1961 as a competitor to 7 Up. Well, the kind of Sprite we're talking about today is a little bit different. We pulled straight from Wikipedia. In computer graphics, a sprite is a two-dimensional bitmap that is integrated into a larger scene, most often in 2D video games. Originally, the term sprite referred to fixed-size objects composed together by hardware with the background. The use of the term has become more general. Systems with hardware sprite include arcade machines, game consoles like the Atari VCS, ColecoVision, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis, both computers like the TI-994A, Atari 8-bit machines, Commodore 8-bit machines, Commodore 16-bit machines, MSX, Amiga, X16000, blah -de -blah -de -blah. Hardware composition of sprites occurs as each scan line is prepared for the video output device, which is a CRT, without involvement from the main CPU, and without a need for a full screen frame buffer. Sprites can be positioned or altered by setting attributes during the hardware composition process. CPUs in modern computers, video game consoles, and mobile devices are fast enough that bitmaps can be drawn on into a frame buffer without special hardware assistance. Alternatively, modern GPUs can render vast numbers of scaled, rotated, anti-aliased, and regularly translucent images in parallel with the CPU. So the convenient thing about sprites is that they're independent from the rest of the screen. We can change things like the color attribute or the position just by just writing to a single register instead of having to copy all that data around in the screen ram. Okay, so finally on to the Commodore 128. So, before we can display some sprites, we have to first create some sprites. And conveniently, the Commodore 128 actually has a sprite editor built in, which is super cool. And we access it by simply typing SPRDEF at the uh, basic prompt. And I should mention that this only works in 40 column mode. Once we are in the editor, it prompts us for a sprite number. We can enter a number 1 through 8 since it can display 8 different sprites. It starts at 1 and goes to 8 on the Commodore 128 instead of uh, 0 through 7 on the Commodore 64. So let's just go ahead and select sprite number 1 and as you can see there's just a bunch of random garbage there and we can clear it the same way we clear the screen at the basic prompt by just typing shift clr home. And as you can see we got a little crosshair here we can move it around using the cursor keys and we can draw by pressing the 2 key and erase by pressing the 1 key. By default, every time you draw a square, a little crosshair will move to the right one square after you draw that square. And you can toggle that on and off by pressing A. As you've also probably noticed, it gives us a little preview of our sprite in the top right hand corner. You can make it a double wide sprite by pressing X, and we can make it a double height sprite by pressing Y. We can change the color of our sprite by pressing either Control or Commodore in conjunction with the number keys, same way that we change the cursor color with the basic prompt. Now that we're done editing our sprite, we can hit Shift Enter. You can also hit Run Stop Enter, but it won't save your sprite. So if you want to save your sprite, you have to hit Shift Enter, and it'll bring us back to the sprite number prompt. We can enter another sprite number here, like Sprite 2, hit Shift Enter, and then hit Enter again, which will drop us back to the basic prompt. Now to display our sprite, we can just type Sprite 1, 1 which will turn on sprite 1. We can hide the sprite again by typing 1, 0. There are quite a number more parameters we can use with the sprite command other than just the sprite number and whether to turn it on and off. We can also enter a color. We can enter the priority, so if it's 0, the sprite will appear in front of text, and if it's 1, the sprite will appear behind the text. We can also manually set via the command whether we want to be double height or double wide with the, having 1s or 0s in the next couple positions. And uh, there's my sprite. As you can see, it's behind the uh, text on the screen. I can change that by changing this value here. Change it to zero, and as you can see now, it's in front of the text. Let's change the color a bit so you can see it a bit better. In front of text with the zero, and change that to one, and it's behind the text. And here's me just playing with the double height and double width. Okay, so what about multicolor sprites? So let's head back into the sprite editor, and let's edit sprite number two. Again, shift clear home to clear it. And now we're gonna hit the M key which will put it into multicolor mode. As you can see, our little cursory thing is twice as wide. There's two little crosshairs. And we 
use the 2 key to draw color 1 and the 3 key to draw color 2. And if you're wondering why it's twice as wide, well in multicolor mode, you can have two colors in your sprite, but the sacrifice is that the horizontal resolution is cut in half. One of the colors is orange, as you can see in one of them is white. Color that's white here on screen, you can control within the sprite editor by hitting by hitting control in conjunction with the number keys, whereas the orange color is going to stay the same, we're going to set what that actually is within uh, basic. So now that I'm done editing my sprite, I can press shift, enter, enter to save and quit. So let's use the sprite command again. We're going to go sprite 2, and we're going to turn it on there. Let's add some more parameters. If we want to change the orange part, we can use the color parameter. And the color parameter will only change that orange part. The white part, if we want to change that, we have to go into the editor to change it. And we can do all the same things like change the priority, make it double height and double width and whatnot. And uh, yeah, there's our multicolor sprite. So now I'm going to show you how you can move sprites around on the screen. You can use that by using the move sprite command or MOVSPR. Then the sprite number, so we're going to go sprite number 1. And then the X coordinate, then the Y coordinate. And there we go. Now I'm going to show you how you can use the move sprite command to sort of kind of animate your sprites. This is, this is really fun. So we're going to go move sprite. And then we're going to do the sprite number, we're going to do sprite 2 this time. And then we're going to enter an angle. So if we want it to move on a, in a straight horizontal line, we're going to do 90 degrees. And then we're going to use a number sign. Some people call it a hashtag, but it's actually a number sign. And then we're going to enter a speed. Let's do speed number 6. And there we go. As you can see, it's moving across the screen like that. We can change the angle to something like 45. Yeah, and this is completely IRQ driven, meaning that this can run like in the background, sorta. And we can still use the computer while our sprites are just flying around the screen. You can even have multiple sprites going at the same time at different speeds. And here's what it looks like with all eight sprites flying around the screen. So uh, you can have a fair bit of fun with this one. So as you can see, I've made a bunch of sprites here, uh, eight of them to be exact, which is the maximum that the uh, Vic video chip in the Commodore 128 could support. So to save it, we're going to use the bsave command. This will allow us to save the contents of a specific area of memory as like a binary file. And then we're going to go bsave, specify the file name, and then specify the bank and memory addresses. It also works better if you don't do what I did and make a typo. That's how they kind of flicker a bit when they're saving. Weird. Now to load our sprites again, we just type bload followed by sprites. We don't have to add any sort of device number at, at the end. And if we go into the sprite definition program here, and we cycle through all the different sprites, you can see that all our sprites have been loaded again. There is one more parameter we can enter with the sprite command I didn't show you earlier. So if we just to type the sprite command to display our uh, sprite 2, which if you remember was a multicolor sprite, it, it doesn't look right because it's treating it as a monochrome sprite. The information for like if it's double height, double width, or multicolor is not saved when you use when you save the sprites to disk. It's just the image data. So you'll have to add like an extra one to the end of the command, which will tell it to treat it as a multicolor sprite. As you can see, now it's displaying properly. And if you're wondering, the bload and bsave commands are not specific sprite commands. All they do is just save the data that's in a specified area in memory. When we use the bsave, we're just specifying the area in memory where the sprites are saved. This is actually the official way that the manual tells us to save our sprites. Another thing about the bload command is you can use it in your basic program and it won't break out of the program. If you recall, the regular load command, if you use it in your basic program, it'll actually break you out of the program. You can use bload in our basic program and the program will keep running. As you can see with this little program I wrote here. If you want to truly appreciate the Commodore 128 sprite commands, we have to look at how you program sprites in basic on a Commodore 64. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write this program. It's mainly just a bunch of data statements. It's with this little loop here, and it just pokes the uh, data into the area of memory where we want our sprites to live. And we run that, and it takes a second to run. Now we're going to set our sprite pointer by going poke 2040. Then we're going to set that to 200, which will tell the VIC2 chip where to find the sprites in memory. Next we're going to go 53248 to set the X position, and then 53249 to set the Y position. Then we're going to go poke 53269 
to turn the sprite on. And there we go, there's our sprite. We can change the color of the first sprite by poking 53287 followed by the color code. So as you can see, that's not nearly as convenient as the sprite commands that are built into the Commodore 128. And if we want to move the sprite diagonally across the screen, we have to type this really long command with like a loop and a couple of pokes and everything. Although I do admire the intimacy to the hardware that you get when programming on like a Commodore 64, it definitely is convenient to have like the sprite commands on like the 128. And well, that just about wraps it up for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it, I hope you maybe learned something. And uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you.